You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, it's always been a part of me to fight for those who couldn't fight for themselves. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Nashville After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Nashville After Show. <laughs> Woohoo! Bing is for doing, and we're here doing another After Buzz show for Nashville, episode 19 called Why Don't You Love Me? I'm your host, JJ Jurgens, and I'm joined by... Hi, everybody. Whitney Lane. Hi, I'm Jennifer Golden. And I am Lauren Leonelli. Hi, y'all. And our lovely engineer... Hello, everyone. Marissa. <laughs> Yay! All right. Well, it's now we're going to break down the episode. We're going to start talking about... We're going to break down the episode and give you all the latest news and gossip. <laughs> <laughs> that, too. <laughs> yeah, you hear that somewhere before? I do. <laughs> <know. laughs> so, so let's start talking about Gunner and Scarlett. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Scarlett wasn't really in the episode too much. She's doing pretty she well. She felt like right? a lot. It felt like she was there a lot. <laughs> really? Yeah. I like her more. I don't you know do. Sorry for I her. I do. I'm just like she. She's such a good person, though. She really is when it comes to like loving the people yeah. that she knows. Yeah, that is around. true. Well, you know, we, well, yeah, and we've always said that. We just all feel like she needs to find a little bit more of a backbone. Mm-hmm. And, she and she may. And she may. And she might. And she has since she mm-hmm. left Avery. She we have seen her step a little up a little and make decisions and stop being such that what I like to call a shivering lamb in the corner. But yeah, I mean, I do think that you know she she is obviously a good-hearted person for the most part i don't know how she handles gunner like he has been so standoffish and i get mm-hmm. it i mean he had a death in his family but it's right. like she's trying and she's trying and yeah. she's trying and you're giving her nothing right you ignore her you don't seem happy to see her yeah that would be hard and i think that's what's hard to see is that she never gets to the point where she breaks like not doesn't break down but where she calls him out on it that's it's like I'm, look you yeah. know you're treating me like crap like i'm here for you she never steps up and does that and i think that's what's hard to watch is she yeah. just takes it right what frustrated me was how she reacted to him though and this is like a a strange girl thing i think maybe that like we sort of want to say something and it comes out a little bit weird where it wasn't meant to be that way but she questioned him about the song that he had and it said oh. she said it more like she was disappointed in him for taking his brother's song versus the fact that it could have been a number of things like, oh yeah like no he doesn't want to be uh, you know a thief or somebody that carries around a gun all the time the song happens to be about that but it's his brother's song nonetheless and it's a good song and what and it's a, what got him the deal and mm-hmm. what a nice way to you know honor his brother and who didn't share have a shot music. yeah they could have been a good thing, but they're they're definitely trying to make it out like with the writing of the show and the direction it's going that this is a secret that he has. Yeah. Like Will is not the only one with the secret here. Like Gunner's got this secret. Will's his name right? right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just questioned myself. Yeah. I'm like, did I just get somebody's <laughs> name right? And so yeah, they're trying to make it out like this is a bad thing, and then obviously Scarlett's another tool in making that happen. Like, oh no, you stole your brother's song. I you think know? you know it's less about the brother and more that he's supposed to be a songwriter and he's supposed to have a publishing deal and he's supposed to be this talented guy that can do things on his own and he writes a certain way and he writes with her and, and he's and not been getting those opportunities scarlet's gone right. off on her own now he's not being able but to he produce has gotten those he's had the option totally. over and over and i get that he's trying to kind of branch out and be on his own but you can see it the reason i don't think scarlet i think he was doing the same thing that scarlet actually said he was questioning himself about it mm-hmm. why am i using my brother's songs why can't i come up with something on my well, own what that's and the bigger question did. what's happening with gunner that he can't produce like he used to i think i don't he's, know i think he's just trying to figure himself out Something's really going do. on. He he seems like he's on a bit of a downward spiral, if you ask me. Well, I think he's still emotional from of course. You know, losing right. his brother. But he yeah, did say he was the talented one. The, the brother was the talented one. Yeah. 
But yeah, I think I think totally going about it all wrong. Why not just say, yeah, hey, I was trying to go down this path, but my songs weren't really making it, and then this, I lost my brother, but. It, I'm inspired by all his writings and his music, and yeah, what better way than to carry his life on? Yeah, by just, just owning sense. up to it, he, and saying you he know? just can't tell people that he wrote the song. I well, mean. no, I think it's more of like he's ashamed that his brother never got the chance to mm -hmm. actually produce these songs that were right. so great that people love that make he him seem guilt. very yeah. talented. I mean, his brother kept saying like this was my dream too, yeah, and then he gets killed. Like that's part of it too. I think I'm sure. he could totally have handled it like you know what I'm gonna do this for my brother, but deep down he knows. His his brother wish she could do it I, w I wonder if it's producing also a little bit of insecurity like we kind of saw with Avery because people around mm -hmm. him are getting these shots and he's not and he's starting to question whether or not he is actually talented enough which I think we all saw in the beginning of the season that he clearly is but mm -hmm. it sounds like there's some things that are contributing to this feeling like he's not quite good enough and in in turn the cyclical action is that he's not going to start producing things like he used to maybe it's like the downward spiral like I'm talking mm -hmm. about maybe. I just am annoyed by her response to it because yeah. Yeah. it's like questioning him which probably add, fuels his fire and it is driving a wedge between them instead of being like what is wrong she asks Will what's wrong with him mm -hmm. and she should just ask him and, mm -hmm. and instead of also say you stole your brother's song say what's going on like are you like you're clearly using your brother's songs like let's talk about yeah it. yeah yeah but she she's gotten her head bit bitten off by him many a times from With her the brother, trying yeah. to talk just in general like i'm sure she's scared that's you know i mean well, she, we, all we always she... call her weak and she really is when it comes to it but he doesn't make it easy like this gunner is hard to like right now yeah. and i get what he's going mm -hmm. through but at the same time like you can treat her a little bit better than that Ex yeah her storylines always get under my skin a little bit. They're always yeah. uncomfortable, and, like, the guy becomes violent or upset or drunk or whatever, mm -hmm. and he's jealous. And yeah. and then there's her, and she just plays such a weak character. Yeah, that's yes. when it gets a little annoying That's why it's watch, hard to watch. Yeah. But it's like this, a stereotype, yeah. and it just repeats itself. Right. right. And you think she would maybe learn from one of the relationships, right. and you'd see something different in the next, but each one mm -hmm. keeps kind of being the but same. At this point, write yeah. a song about it. Yeah. yeah. What do we feel about Will coming in and going to the party what? with her? And also still uncomfortable. Hanging out? Yeah. Why because is he hanging around? I don't know. It was very much like she hung out with Avery and Gunner, like not together, but she had those two guys, and now she's got to deal with these two guys, and it just feels like a parallel and it's kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. Well, the mm -hmm. sad thing is she has no idea what happened, and Will is like the nice guy. He's mm -hmm. like the breath of fresh mm -hmm. air because mm -hmm. Gunner's treating her kind of poorly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she wants to hang out with someone who's going to be happy I and mean, fun. And besides the kiss, that clearly was not. If he's her friend, he shouldn't have done because that's like if a girl kissed a guy's boyfriend. Yeah. Then so besides right. that that weird awkwardness that he tried to drive a wedge in between them, he he's not doing anything wrong. I mean, he's their neighbor. He was always invited over before. He's been, you know, welcomed into that, into their apartment and hanging out and stuff. And now Gunner is, like, being weird to him, too, which clearly he's uncomfortable Cold about shoulder, the situation. Yeah, at this point. But, I mean, I don't think Will's really doing anything. I mean, he's being very nice, and maybe he's a little bit more of a pushy, outgoing, aggressive, aggressive, aggressive character. But he's not, like, malicious and, like, Weird. He's I, just, I disagree with yeah. this one. I think if, if if it was a girl situation, like if that was somebody's, you know, mm -hmm. we should treat it the same as we would see that. Like, yeah. And if, if some girl tried to like make out with my boyfriend and then was in my kitchen like hanging out acting like everything was cool and wanting right. to go to a party with me and like it's I would be mad at that and I'd also be yes. mad that my boyfriend didn't tell me right. that that happened right that's it, true so it's a little like an insta friend where this guy came on strong yeah, yeah. like he but always they, felt like there was a little Dante in him yes he that's had that true. Dante yes. vibe I worried about him too but I feel like he I, I'm not getting like the super malicious vibe from him like I was from Dante. I but think he's trying to get ahead. He well yeah he brings up songs and says play I feel pass like they all are, but you know what? Gunner kind of annoys me in the fact that he's not like enough of a go getter. Mm -hmm. He's just like, oh there's a party to I mean, yeah, he had the recording session, but I just Still, he, wouldn't you have I gone just to the party? feel like he just doesn't take opportunities. Like, yeah, I know yeah. his brother died Sabotage. or whatever, and he just like, oh, I'm not coming to the, whatever. And then she tried to get him another mm -hmm. shot with Raina, and he's like, oh, forget it. Like, I just feel like he isn't a You have to look. That is super competitive. Nashville is like Hollywood. It's like 
horribly hard to get ahead. And I'm not saying you have to do bad things to get ahead, but take advantage of your opportunities mm -hmm. at least. And he's just sitting there like picking his nose and then using his brother's song to like maybe try and make himself feel better. But really it's making him feel insecure in his abilities. Yeah. And he annoys me in that. So maybe he should take a little bit of a note from, you know, you go to those parties. Will was schmoozing. That's what you do. Raina took the bait and she's like, I'll listen to your... <laughs> Hello. Because he was with Scarlett, he, so he knows who to hang around. That's what I'm saying. That's what you do. He's not doing anything wrong. Besides the fact mm -hmm. of the uncomfortable kiss and, like, all that, I get that. Which but still I'm saying, needs to be brought up. That's totally the whole right. issue there. But I just feel like beyond that, he's not doing anything that someone who isn't, you know, a go-getter wouldn't think to go take the opportunity and go try and do. It's just how he does it. I think that mm -hmm. it's just so fast and, like, abrupt. Yeah. And, like, it'd be like if I pulled you right now, Lauren, and I brought you right over there. You'd be like, whoa. It, it, yeah. Everything it, he feels very jerky. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything he does is he a does. jerk reaction. He does a little, yeah. And it feels almost like when he's on screen, like you like are pushed back. Mm -hmm. I just feel like yeah. it's that much. It, it's overbearing a little. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with yeah. you on that one, but I also agree with you that yeah. I feel like now in the last few episodes, Gunner's just been moping, and, yeah. and when he's not taking the opportunities that he should, it's annoying. He, yeah, he's sabotaging annoying. his well, own career. Well, and it's going to mm -hmm. be rough when he runs out of his brother's songs and he doesn't have that sound and he doesn't <laughs> yeah. think like that. It's not as dark, like. That's yeah. the problem. I think right. he already knows it. I think that's why he's defensive and he gets all right. anxious when really he needs to open up to Scarlett. They should have this conversation. There's so, he needs, so much communication. He needs, he needs to have, to have yeah. so much yeah. communication. We say it every week. We already know that Scarlett has a hard time communicating anyway. In well, we can't speak it. Every word <laughs> so she said. beyond that, no, but I definitely think that it would be nice to see Gunnar take back some confidence and act on it because it's annoying to watch, just as it is to watch Scarlett, like, not speak her mind and stand up for herself it's annoying to watch his talent go because he's like yeah. feeling it's so deacon yeah. and reyna when they're young and something's pulling them apart and we want them to come back together and sing together because totally. that's where they're both great totally right. mm -hmm. so i'm sure hopefully that'll come back around <laughs> if we get a season two. Oh, no, we are hopeful about that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right well let's move on and start talking about juliet which is kind of interesting because <laughs> avery kind of saves her comes to the rescue. I have been saying you enter haven't. Avery. I just didn't think it was going right. to be into Juliet, but <laughs> well, not yet. <laughs> In that sense, I literally and oh, figuratively. Wow. But yes, no, scandalous. I, yeah, I, I, Ju, for the drinking is just didn't was stop. A, it was um a little unrealistic in my opinion. It felt jerky, <sighs> also and aggressive. She's like. This no. big. Yeah. yeah. She would be on the floor. I That's mean, what we yeah. said. There's no way. Right. She started in the morning. It's not like she's like a country singer that sings all the time. Like, we, you hear about Miranda Lambert si drinking all the time. She was on a Today Show the other day, and they asked her about Pistol Annie's, and she said, well, we can maintain our solo careers and this group that we're in because we drink a lot. But you believe that. She's also yeah. married to Blake Shelton, who drinks a lot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like... For that, that's realistic. But for Juliet, who never drinks, to all of a sudden drink like she, you know... Yeah. Just such a vibe uh, a when fish, she knows but... what her mom's gone through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people try to help her. She just doesn't listen to anybody. She's so immature when it comes down to it. She screams like a little child. Mm -hmm. We saw her scream at Deacon. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just I'm like, so sick yeah. of you. <laughs> it was like, well, he's super sick of you. That's why he's quitting <laughs> right. your band and leaving <laughs> right. because mm -hmm. you've got to get yourself together. Right. Woo. Well, in that moment, he stormed out because of Raina. Right. But he Julia was, was a, a the nagging. <laughs> she pushed him over the edge. She was definitely the straw, the straw like, that broke the camel's back. Up, girl, she we're was trying like a to focus on Deacon and Raina right now. Could yeah. you please be quiet? She was a terrible two. Totally. She in really, that moment. I felt like she really was stomping and like, mm -hmm. <laughs> She was, yeah. But the I just felt like the drinking, like they could have gotten the point across that she's drinking and self-medicating or whatever you want to call it. It would be without every single scene, her like d barely getting her lines mm -hmm. out because she's like kicking back the champagne over and over again. I'm like, really? If they I wanted mean, to make a point, she would have been doing it in secret. I just, I don't well, think they're trying to make her an alcoholic. Yeah, I really yeah. don't. I, I and think I don't. she wants to be wanted so badly. Mm -hmm. She wants these people that she's going to this nomination party, she wants them to be impressed. You know, there's so many different things that she just tries so hard to please other people. And then she's like, I don't care about other people, but that's what you're, I, you're working yeah. towards. I think, right. yeah, ultimately this poor girl has always just wanted love from other people. And the only way she was ever, ever successful at it was with her talent. When she discovered, I'm sure, that she had a talent, she was, you know, had a good voice and people liked her and then she could get that love that way. But clearly that's not enough. 
it's very superficial. And she still tries to do it, though, with, like, spending a million dollars on sending those bobbleheads yeah. to or the champagne yes. or whatever. Like, that's her way to, like, try and control, like, these people are going to love me. But really, when it comes down to it, like, Dante and things like that, she just wants that one intimate love. She just screws it up because I think she gets to it in a weird way or, or something yeah. comes I think she, up. she definitely like jumps in way too fast. Totally. I mean, she was already proposed to the football player. Yeah. Then now she's like, you know, mad that when she finds out about the ring, like, like she would have wanted to marry I mean, this guy yeah, already. Yeah, it was like they were dating for like two problem. weeks. Yeah. Very Britney Spears of her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but Buying I, houses. Yeah. The one thing that like she would have is her mom and like that would be her intimate relationship and yes, it's not in the form of like her and a guy, but it's one that she's obviously missed her whole life, and that's made her become as insecure and distrusting as she is today. Right. So she could mend that relationship and possibly well, turn her life around. I feel mm -hmm. like that's very difficult for her to do. I mean, it's a little sophisticated for the storyline. I, I feel yeah. like that's mm -hmm. not going to just, like, as soon as she receives the love from her mother that she's been waiting for for her, her entire life, it's she's built up such a wall and such a hatred towards her mom. It's not like she can just go, okay, now you're ready to give it to me. I'm, of course. But that's what she needs to do though right but she yeah. I mean she I'm sure she doesn't trust her mom uh, you know with alcoholism it's like okay are you gonna start drinking again it's yeah. a matter right. of time right. really it's so. also kind of the whole point right she's lost everyone that she's tried to attach to but mm -hmm. her mom is the one that's left there by her couch mm -hmm. waiting mm -hmm. to help her that's like, so sweet it's the point of the show right they're trying to bring them back together that's and just a way and she cried and then she opened up and said what What did she say what why uh, why, why does nobody love me or something like just that just like yeah, yeah something, something like, like that Basically, and, why me? Oh, look what's happening behind you, Whitney. Oh, my fave. Whitney, oh, yeah. I oh. mean, we all know that Whitney, uh, we're all, we all love Deacon, but Whitney has a special, special obsession. <laughs> and it was very fun this out, to watch. Way. Oh, come on. <laughs> it was very fun to watch this episode with Whitney because, I mean, she was just like, oh my God, I'm dying. Oh my God. <laughs> look at him. Oh, I don't want to see her profile. I want to see his profile. But what? Right? He looks like he's Am good I at right? that. I he looks like you are he right looks on like that. watching him make out. It wasn't nearly as good as seeing Deacon doing the kissing when you see Raina doing the kissing. Her, he looks like he's good at that. Look at him. <laughs> he does. He does. He people. does. I'm not disagreeing. It was just very really cute to watch the episode with all of it. It was funny. Anyway, sorry. You know, okay, she, we'll can get, I just say quickly, while we're, on, while we're yeah. on the subject of the kissing, it looked almost like she took a breath of air and then kissed him. Like she went. Yeah. Oh, like she was going to hold yeah. her breath or something. Like, Maybe. <laughs> well. Or give him CPR. Yeah, her lips her, were a little weird too. Like her mouth was, was open not. in Go a way that looked like she was pushing air into his mouth. Maybe she was practicing CPR. CPR. It was still better than Juliet and Avery's kiss, I must say. Oh. I'll give it to Rain and Deacon. Yeah, let's, so let's get let's into what happened with that. Exactly. So yeah, so Deacon quits. Gets so, after her tantrum. I thought just he leaves. quit while they were on tour. He always quits. He like, yeah. <laughs> What I just can't quit you. <laughs> that's what he's going to say next episode. Oh, I just that, can't that's a good line. To Raina, not Juliet. So then Avery comes in and plays. We all thought that she might not even make it because she'd be so drunk and couldn't oh sing the song. Oh, my God. Song, I thought she'd sure be thought horse. That. Yeah, me too. I was like, her voice. What's Sounds happening? Sounds horse. Kind well, of did it. that was just lucky break a little bit, right? For for the night. People enter, saw him. Enter Avery. Right. And Andrew, then sorry, we're waiting. Good her. job, Avery, for realizing she's a drunk, hot mess and you not going go home, home with her. her. Right? He wasn't an opportunist in that moment, and he was a good guy. And yeah. I also called this as well with Avery. Yes, he made Changed. some mistakes, and he is now back into the. Oh, and this. I'm just saying, Gunner is like on the way out, and Avery seems like just he's on the way in. Cut that hair, Avery. Yeah, and the maybe haircut. I'll like you. We didn't like that haircut. <laughs> no, but I did think that was. I was a little surprised in that moment when she was like, "Come home with me in the car." Juliet said that yeah, to Avery, and he was like, "That's not a good idea." I, I mean, there, there we go. Good care, good choice. Yeah, you know. He's I'm, getting yeah. better. I'm still like, is. oh, but well, yeah, I I, mean, I'm rooting for him a little bit more. Yeah, it's like they made him look like a dirty, grungy guy, but he's not that guy. It, I, I mean, he I may agree. be, but I, I just yeah, the look's not helping him, right? Yeah. yeah, that hair, the hair needs it's to like and the facial hair, the facial hair. Is yeah. Oh, is it still that? It's yes, still it's still there. there. People, take that, cut this <laughs> short. Oh, You're gonna look yeah. good. Styling according to Whitney. <laughs> Somebody um, in the next episode. But we'll see. Maybe he, maybe that would have helped him out. Pushed his career along. We'll see, right? We He's going to need a guitarist. So. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think that the he proved to be a better guy and one that is not trying to use her. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, who knows if she'll remember anything because she was so drunk. But 
Hopefully. And Someone he seemed, will. you know, he thanked her too, which yeah. I thought was a nice moment. He again seemed very yeah. grateful and happy for the opportunity and, yeah. and wasn't all about like, oh yeah, now I'm up there. It's my big break. Right. Like, right. I, I really, that was refreshing. Right. That. Good job, Totes. Avery. I liked it. All right. Well, did you, uh, we had, do you have any comments that you wanted to, we went and looked at comments that you guys have posted and thank you all for watching and commenting. Yeah. Jen, yes. is there anybody that you wanted to? Well, thank you. Sorry to put you on someone for having a crush on me. But (laughs) second, I used a saying last week about somebody should get some balls or grow some grow a pair, and I don't mean that in any other way other than it's a phrase. And I'm not like somebody that's like, oh, women should be men. Just get some guts. How about that? Is that better? That's well. But thanks for commenting. We always like to hear because you guys have great ideas. So it's always good to to hear what you think. Yeah, we like we love the predictions. We love the love of Deacon. I mean, yeah, we want to hear what you guys have to say. So do not forget to go onto iTunes and rate and comment, like you've been doing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Yeah. keeps the lights on here for us, and we love to keep the conversation going. Look, we're talking about it right now Mm -hmm. with you all. See, it's like we're having a conversation. And I do also want to mention that we are streaming live on iPads and iPhone mm-hmm. everywhere Auto now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so you can So you can't anytime. miss us. <laughs> no, you can watch us from anywhere you are. And then anywhere. call in and call us and talk while you're watching. I mean, that's really <laughs> join the conversation. No way around it, guys. No way. We are in your faces. We love it. And you like it. Mhm. Mhm. All right, so let's now move forward and talk about Coleman. Yeah. And the politics a little bit. Mm-hmm. Coleman has always, like, it's like he, he is confusing to me. Like, he's mm-hmm. this nice like, family man who's good-hearted, and you see him with Deacon, and you really feel like he's just, like, a good person. And then things happen where he might take advantage of a situation and kind of, like, undercut somebody. Oh, yeah. And here... But I feel like for the most part, he feels like a good guy. But then there was like mm-hmm. little incidents that happened. In this episode, I was like, oh, that was totally planned when he left Teddy. Like, that, okay, because... Yeah, oh, he manipulated well, that. always going to be looking out for himself. He did lose That's the race. That's politics. Like, I think he's mm-hmm. a scorned man, and I'm not that upset with him for trying to mm-hmm. kind of come out on top of this web he's been woven into. Because they're all out for themselves, too, and they yeah. want to use him and control his career. And... And they're being nasty to him. It's almost about think, time that yeah. Lamar and Tandy and the whole situation comes out, but they do it to each other instead right. of Coleman being right. in the midst of it. He's yeah. a smart guy. He's not doing the worst thing in the world. It's just mm-hmm. like I'm saying, sometimes all of a sudden he'll do something that's like a little politician-y. I'm like, oh, that, well, that is what he really is, so there we go. Right. I you do know. like that he and his wife are a team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, she wants the best for him. Yeah. They're, he's thinking about his family yeah. and himself, and he wants to be back in that seat, you know, yeah. the mayor's seat. So. We'll see what happens with that. Mm-hmm. Teddy was shocked for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But Teddy was getting lots of shockers this episode. <laughs> yes, anyway, he was. <laughs> I thought he was going to react differently when Raina told him her big news, but we can get into that. In a let's second. do it. Well, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we're talking about yeah. Well, I feel like he that has been his thing that he has just been like so waiting w- to happen, worried about the entire time. And when she said that to him. I mean, I obviously it would have been a little over dramatic to have him like blow up and go crazy, but I he didn't react how I thought he would. However, I do think it was kind of nice that he j- the most important thing to him wasn't it wasn't like a selfish thing like not him instead of me. It was the, all about the daughter, which was kind of nice. Like that was what he was felt most protective about. But I which I is, thought I was gonna see a little more emotion about him being like Deacon Earth. They so mm-hmm. messed up though because it's not your birth daughter you know what I mean your biological daughter so that's still a little bit messed up because you need to think about her in terms of she should know her real dad at some point in her life well they did not make a very good decision but they made that decision together a long time ago a long time ago Raina I don't think should have ever agreed to that but I mean I guess yeah Uh, it was a bad decision but now he he I mean, he is trying to fight for his right that he raised this girl, and it's very and that's all he has left right now. It is all he has left, and but it's a bad decision. I mean, he's only just reiterating the promise that they made. The promise in general was a bad thing. To the the whole thing was a bad decision. There should have been a clause like, let's wait till she's old enough. Yeah, it really. I want to see that moment. Like, I want to go them to do a flashback of just like how did they decide that? Because it's like that is such a huge thing, and I don't know how you how you do that to somebody. So it's like I want to see what exactly was going on. Well, remember Lamar was involved in this. It was all about kind of 
covering up certain things in their careers, mm-hmm. both of them, Teddies, mm-hmm. all of that. I think it just had to do with, you and know, Deacon was in rehab at the time. Family getting right. ahead, yeah. Deacon was in rehab at the time, and mm-hmm. who knows, they maybe just thought he was never going to recover or whatever. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, but bad decision. And, and also for poor Deacon. I mean... Yeah. Well, it's going to come back to bite them in the butt. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Even though he said all those sweet things like, you don't have to tell me or you can tell me. It doesn't matter. But going back to Teddy's reaction, I felt like I almost got hurt by her because you could put yourself in her position, in his position, actually, in that moment. You've been with this person for 14 years. All you've ever wanted to do is be loved by this person and all you've done is love them. And the one thing you've worried about is that person and this other person that you know she really loves. Mm-hmm. They break up and it's like a slap in the face. Like, yeah. really? I just spent 14 years with you. Couldn't you have, like, not? No, That's what I've been saying this along. entire time. Yeah, but she wasn't like, yeah, I'm sure he knew instinctually or right. was worried about it, but she was having kids with him and living this married life with yeah, him. I mean, I he's obviously holding on to the hope because he's in love with her. And furthermore, Raina did the same <laughs> thing to Deacon. He's like waiting for everyone wants yeah. Raina to love them and she, she's just like on her own well, little she's freaking planet. Again, she made me so mad this episode. I'm Ay. like, okay, Raina, I'm done. I'm done with you. Like like you said when when Deacon's saying all these sweet things through the I episode, know. and you're like, you know, women would die to have somebody saying these things to mm-hmm. them and this type she of relationship. She actually said she actually said, Yo, this is a love that you can't, that you dream of. Yep, that's what she oh, said. I was like, who, when Raina? You, did, you. you said that people dream that women dream of. Well, it's true. Right. It it's is. true. Yeah. Absolutely. You want like, to find that one love, course. like the love of his life. That's yeah. what he told Coleman. That's why he kind yeah. of like can get defensive about it because that is that, the love of his life. That, right. I'm glad you brought up. That was actually a great line when yeah. Coleman was accus- accusing him of just uh, being addicted to her yes. and that it would go back being some of the addiction. And I thought, um, I actually wrote that one down. Yeah, that was, you know, it's true. It's an interesting comparison yeah. because you can get addicted to things like that in a relationship sort of situation. Yeah. It was such a good line. Yeah, he said, is she an addiction or just the, you know, the love, love of your life. life? Yeah. And she is. Yeah. She is. Now, the thing about it is she also doesn't make decisions on her own. She very much yeah. talks to her sister, talks right. to her. That's I her problem. Mm-hmm. I think that's why she has a hard time because she's thinking about her kids now. Of after course, Tandy brought which that up. she should So she be. can't completely open up to Deacon. Teddy, you know, the reaction, he was just like flat out, no, you should think about this. Like, she really has never, I don't think her entire life, made a decision that she really wanted to make. And I thought that's what we finally saw last week. I thought, okay, she finally weighed all the, you know, weighed Mm -hmm. it all out and decided it's worth it to go back with Mm -hmm. Deacon. Because I feel like you don't make that step to Deacon unless you are completely ready to face all because this. Because once unless you do, it's yeah. full-fledged. That, that, that way she too much history. That she doesn't think that much about I things. I feel like she, I, right, and I thought last week maybe she finally did, but since she went to the door and, you know, she right. did that, but then to, to just get in, like, 10 minutes into this episode right. this time and she's already going back and pulling back from him it's it, uh, i agree her decisions so to me it's like think about the longevity and like who it's affecting well, you can't not. just no. string she's your husband herself. along for 14 years and lie yeah. to deacon about the it's just annoying to me that she does that and that everyone loves her so much and she's this like angel but really it's annoying well, to me that she um, does that it's cruel I mean that's it, what I think it's, it's very selfish cruel. Thing, though, yeah you guys I'm trying just to play devil's advocate a little bit because I've already mentioned like she's never really made her own decisions I think the one time she went after Deacon she said I love you when she went to his doorstep she was thinking about herself she was making that decision but then you do get caught up in oh well what else who else is this affecting she wasn't thinking all that she was trying to be that free lady she's divorced now Which, or she's getting divorced I like, feel like I give her that with uh, Liam when she had her fling yeah. yes but when you make the decision to go back to Deacon, I think it's a completely different thought process. It is. And it's, it's not, not just well, free. She yeah, her like heart, not she really knew all this stuff through. before. It, yeah, it's difficult. It's it like through. when you, I mean, this is way more extreme, but it's like if you are friends with someone for like a year and then you guys decide to turn your friendship into a relationship, it's like full fledged, like right away. Like that's a decision that needs to be thought about. This is even 10 times that because right. of all of the history and then plus now we have to watch her squirm every time he's like i love your girls and i just want a yeah. family it's and uncomfortable for everyone which she watching. would know clearly okay if they're going to be a couple she, he's going to be around her kids so right. she would have had to think about like hey am i really going to be able to keep this secret or are we going to have this conversation right. or what's going to happen you know? stupid decision well, speaking of i mean we saw maddie go to the father-daughter dance mm-hmm. that teddy kind of forced her to go to mm-hmm. Um, so that's just going to be a whole another can of worms that's going to open later oh, yeah. on. But what would you think about the dance? 
I'm glad she ended yeah. up having fun, but yeah, she's not happy with it. I them. get it, though. Yeah. It's like, I think if that happened to me and you were the one that found out that yeah, your dad yeah. was like with some other woman, you'd be very standoffish and like, I don't want to be around you. Oh, yeah, yeah, But I yeah. thought she did pretty well at opening up once he talked to her and like dancing yeah. and laughing. Like, yeah. that's hard. Yeah. That After actually happened to me my senior year in high school. Yeah, and I was mad at my mom like for a long time. Like, you, it, when you're at that age, it's so when huge. When you're old enough, yeah. Right. I would not doubt she'll have resentment for quite some time, even if she can smile and like, pretend yeah. it's okay for a night mm -hmm. she even said she wishes they were back together mm -hmm. and i wondered right mm -hmm. there did teddy think the same thing did he wish that things oh, would have been sure different he because does. peggy yeah. kind of didn't work out she, for him she so. bulldozed her way in there and kind of distracted yeah. him but i think he a hundred percent i've always said this has been so in love with reyna and just she could never I mean, I will, again, play devil's advocate like you were doing. I'm sure Raina tried really hard. I'm sure she does have a love for Teddy. It's oh, just sure. her underlying mm -hmm. decisions are very selfish. But because she presents herself so gracefully, it comes out sounding okay. But really, underneath it all, the decisions are selfish and a little annoying oh, yeah. to watch. Wait, Since we're, oh, oh, go ahead. You go ahead. I was going to say, um, just a show of hands, how much does it suck to be Teddy, Stacy, anybody else that comes in these like star cross lovers way. I know. Because you can't mess with that. Yeah. That is like no. that's and like one of my biggest fears is to like right. be that girl that you don't know that there's something else bigger than you oh. going on yeah. that but the minute you the look thing. the other way yeah. with Teddy, Done. she loves him, but that he's not the love of her life. Nope. Just like right. Deacon pointed yeah. out, that's it. That's it. So mm -hmm. I don't know why anyone tries to mess with it. Just give them the time. It'll work out when it does. But I was just going to bring up Stacy when you said that, too, mm -hmm. right before you said that, too. It's hard. I mean, because they, they do have a good relationship, and she is. There's you know, nothing wrong with her. her. Yeah, yeah. No. good for him. But And, I again, I liked her, what she, how she acted in the scene and mm -hmm. their yeah. dynamic. Great scene, yeah. Yeah. And we got to see our dog again. Great way to write the <laughs> she, yeah. write the dog off the show. The dog probably got hired on another show. <laughs> the yeah, dog, sure that dog was adorable. Yeah. Oh, I how sad. Some. He was just like, uh, oh. you'd be better off taking the dog. She's like, you're right. And then they leave. I'm like, that was nice. Yeah. Probably going to be in the puppy Super Bowl this year. Oh, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> well, I know that was interesting, but could have assumed it right. Good I thing mean, they gave us yeah. a little closure on that. Stacy Deacon thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although no one was really thinking much about it. <laughs> totally Deacon forgot about her. Was together. surprised this year. Yeah. Was very surprised. Uh, really yeah. was very surprised as well. <laughs> I was not, but yeah, I mean, I knew that that was obviously coming to an end, clearly. Again, anybody gets in the way of Reyna and Deacon, it's like you're going to end up on the out. So. <laughs> It's just Enjoy a matter it while of time, you can. though, because they may seem blissful and happy right now, although they still have a lot of issues to work out. Right. But we know it's it can't last forever, and these shows news, killing me. Big news is on the horizon for them, so. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else on this episode you guys, you guys want to touch? I think we got some good things. I know, we sure did. Ready yeah. for some prediction? News yeah. and gossip. Right, news, let's, news oh, and gossip. oh, that's right. I'm backwards. Okay, because we were talking about it, we heard, you know, a gunshot in the, the preview for mm -hmm. next week. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, E! Online reports that in the season finale, two people will die. <gasps> what? So big, like, cliffhangers that go into the next season if we get picked up for next season. Two people. They will not come back. Their deaths are deaths. I wonder if they're going to do, like, the 90210 death where they killed, no. like, David Silver's, like, uh, friend that nobody really cared about. Well, I can or, totally see that. Or and let's get if to they're going to pick, yeah. Because I think mm -hmm. I could already predict a couple now that we yeah. know. <laughs> um, a couple of things. I thought this was kind of interesting. Connie Britton used to be roommates with Lauren Graham, who played Lorelai Gilmore. No way. Isn't that funny? I love that. And she, was, she said Britton would leave the dishes in the sink forever and would always steal her <laughs> shoes and things like that, which that's just interesting, right? They both made it. They're both yeah, successful actresses. It's funny so. to think of them as people that had roommates once. Yes. Yeah. See? That's cool. Um, let's see. Hayden was spotted cheering on her honey slash maybe fiance at one of his fights, one of his boxing matches. Mm -hmm. and, and also went yeah. to the sports Emmys with them, and she looked really cute in a great dress. And I saw one. a cute picture of them on the beach together, um, and it was really funny to see the size difference yeah. in this photo because, oh I goodness. mean, really, it's like it was a cute picture, though. And lastly, this was kind of interesting. Y'all got y'all have to check it out. So in the May issue of Allure magazine, we have a <laughs> naked Scarlet. It's a very um, interesting. Photo. Yeah, she basically stripped down. Apparently, it was the only one that skinny dipped as well because she was like, "I'm used to the Nashville weather, so let me just go skinny dipping out here." Wow. But anyway, so Jennifer Morrison was in it from Once Upon a Time, and also Naya Rivera from Glee. 
So you'll have to check out that. She did an interview um, also with Backstage and gave six tips for breaking into the U.S. acting market. So if you're interested That's in that, awesome. you can go to Backstage and check that out as well. All right. That's all I got for you. All right. Okay. Thanks. Okay, let's get into predictions. Yes. And now, you're after Buzz TV. Are you dying to predict something, Jen? I think Gunner is going to die. Mm. You really think they're going to go there? This is the only thing I know that for sure it's not the two girls. The, like Scar or Raina and Juliet, they're not the ones that get killed. Not. But mm. everyone else is kind of up for grabs. No way. They're going to kill like Dante and some, Will. the assistant Will. or somebody that we don't really care I'm about. Yeah. For Dante. But. I think Dante too because the, the yell at the end of the... The teaser was, it sounded like Juliet's, Juliet's voice. cry, but remember, there's two, so who knows? I so think Dante and... Uh, my prediction on that is that what's going to happen is, is there he's, you know, blackmailing her with this sex tape, and I feel like it's going to get to a point where they're meeting somewhere, or he's going to intrude in the house, and out of self-defense, he's going to get shot. Or someone will. Yeah, I, I will. even could see Gunner killing will i don't think so maybe but. gunner mm -hmm. gunner needs to he's trying to find the, the, the dark, dark edgy stuff. side like so his he brother can write about so it. exactly that's what that. i was mm -hmm. going with when we see him fighting in the trailer yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah they get in a Which, fight mm -hmm. will and him and someone else right mm -hmm. so who knows it could be like coleman i think you Don know what i mean like we really oh. have no idea what's gonna happen i think one of them they're gonna have to be shockers that's what they say. So I'm sure. uh, I think the whole Maddie thing will be the biggest shocker. Of I the think season. that I'm going to say that that is going to end the season. Yeah. That, yes. that is when he my prediction. just finds out and then yeah. like, see you later until yeah. next year. You think it'll end with just her telling him and his reaction? And then she's like, right. but wait, mm -hmm. what are yeah. we yeah. actually, what's like, going to happen? It'll be a cliffhanger with them where we don't know. Right. What or, or we'll see Deacon discover it on its own somehow. He's going to, somehow he worse. will know. Right. Without her. Yeah. yeah. And, and then that's how the season's going to end. Right. That's I my hope prediction. he does not discover oh it on his goodness. own. I really hope Especially when he knows, well, it very well could be that because he knows she's hiding something and to find out on his own that that's what she's hiding. <gasps> that, that's world. a big, oh, good. that's a big something. Yeah. yeah. Talk about a wedge. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's it for tonight. Where can everybody follow you guys at? I'm Lauren Leonelli. You can follow me at Lauren Leonelli on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, my website, and Vine. <laughs> I'm Jennifer Golden. You can find me at Jen the Jew on Twitter and Instagram and Vine. And Jennifer Golden on Facebook and JenniferGolden.com is my website. And I'm Whitney Lane. You can find me on Twitter at Whitney Lane 1118 and on my website, Whitney-Lane.com. And I'm at JJ Jorgens and at JJJorgens.com. All right. See you all next week. <laughs> From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.